My guest today is Valerie Gurka. Valerie, how are you? I'm doing great today. How are you doing, David? I have not stopped smiling since I woke up this morning. Oh, awesome. What do you do for a living, Valerie? Uh, yes, um, I am the founder and director of engineering at Tech Figures, which is a software development company. Um, and we have five architects and 10 engineers, and we do all kinds of um, software development. And I've been doing basically project management and engineering management for over 20 years. Cool. You wear a lot of hats, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. I've, over, uh, over, over time, I've had different jobs, but this, uh, this company I've had, um, it's a new company, and um, we're very excited to get going. Awesome. And you're down in Texas, although I met you in Ohio, and yes. I'm here in Chicago. I met, do you want to tell our listeners a story about how we met each other? Oh, refresh my memory. Oh, you don't even remember. I'm just kidding. Um, we were at a conference called Code Mash, which was uh -huh. an amazing That's what I remember. conference. It was during a blizzard in Ohio in January. And I was surprised I was even able to fly there. Okay. And it was breakfast time. I was hungry. I went down there got my breakfast, sat down at a round table and David was there and uh, we struck up a conversation. He said, I said, I have a podcast. He said he has a podcast. And guess what? Here we are. We connected on that. Yes. Well, I asked you, what do you want to talk about? And you said that uh, you're passionate about documentation. Not a lot of people are passionate about documentation. Well, it needs why to is be, that so important? It needs to be talked about. Um, let's see. Well, okay. What? So why do I, why am I passionate about documentation? Because I have clients that struggle with documentation all the time sure. they don't have it they can't find it they don't know where it is they looking at code they don't know what the code says or who did it or when it was when the origin was it's it's just a hot mess and also when you're you know passing over um code to another person or you're passing over an architecture to like another department etc um, without documentation or any kind of architecture diagrams or anything like that, then you really have to kind of start over and nobody wants to start over, um, when they're working on like, you know, a whole bunch of projects, nobody wants to have to start over from the beginning again and pay all those project project, uh, costs again to start over because you don't know what, what's there. So yeah, that I think is the why reason I am why... passionate about documentation. Yeah, it's clear to me the reason why is because documentation for so many folks is an afterthought. It's uh, it's not a high priority thing because it feels like, oh, I should be spending my time developing new code, not uh, documenting existing code or documenting right. code for the And for the think future. about how much money you will lose if you, let's say a few years go by, right? And then you have to work on a system that you worked on three years ago. And then sure. you, you get, you pull the code up and you're like, oh, who worked on this? Oh, yeah. What this idiot person, wrote this code? This person's oh. not here anymore. Oh, well, even if it's me, the whole team's yeah. not here anymore. Oh, it was a vendor <laughs> and they, they're not our vendor anymore. And then it's like, well, does anybody have any information on it? So you're running around trying to find information on this code and you're spending your time, your, the company's money on your hours of time. And then you sometimes have to go and hire someone else to figure it out, go back, figure out the code. And then they decide, oh, well, we can't understand this code either. So we're just going to have to start it over. Now you're going to have to start up from scratch again. So think in the about, long run, it can save money. Think about how much money you're going to be losing with all those hours of time that you have to spend researching and rewriting um, you know, code that you don't understand or you know, need to Absolutely. start over with. So that's, that's my, you could tell I'm passionate about that. Yeah, I, I admire your passion. And I, I, I think that's the reason that this is misguided. This idea that it's a low priority is that they're saving money in the short term, but it could cost them a lot of money in the long yeah, term. Yeah. But nobody thinks about that. They're like, right. Oh, 
if I would have, if I would have had all this, you know, like they're, they're in the middle of the code and we're like, oh, we have to rewrite all of this. Oh, that, that old company. Well, blame it on the old company or <laughs> the vendor or whatever, the people that used to, you know, used to work there and left. Um, you can blame it on them, but you still have to do, you have still have to get the work done. Right. So exactly. documenting it, it doesn't mean that you don't have to work on the system. Um, it just means that you don't have to start from zero. Correct. So. All right. So I think we've, we're in violent agreement on this. Documentation is, in fact, an important thing. Uh, but not all documentation is the same. Are there, there are different types of documentation, correct? Um, yeah. So different kinds of documentation. And I'm coming from a perspective of I have like a very strong like project management and like management background. I, I've, I have coded before in my life but it's been a long time. I'm not an engineer. I don't do engineering. So I'm going to really kind of talk a little more on the high level side. Um, but the types of documentation that, um, and of course there are many times, many kinds, but, um, so there is code documentation, so I can't really speak too much on that, but maybe you can. Um, but that's basically when you're, you know, commenting within the code, either line by line or section by section and describing what you're doing and describing what those lines of code are saying. Um, I, maybe you, David, can elaborate on on documenting. Oh, um, in, you know, in code I, I'm not a big fan of line by line documentation. I think the code should be self documenting. But I'm a big fan of documenting method by method or class by class, that sort of thing. Okay, good. Uh, another one is uh, technical documentation. So um, that's sort of like, you know, you have you're going to go in and you're going to find that you know a lot a lot of times maybe an architect might go in and 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 find out about the system and they're gonna um they're gonna create documentation having to do with the system architecture um they're gonna figure out like um just basically they're gonna write up like everything like wh what talks to what and and that kind of a thing so just like technical documentation and then when you do when you write custom code um or when you're you know on a, on a project where you're you know starting from scratch um a lot of times it's a very good idea to just start documenting as you go. Like when you code, you write it down and you make like a little document that has chapters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that would be the technical documentation, which I do, uh, ha I'm a big believer in having um, architecture diagrams. Um, a lot of yes. times clients may not have that. Um, and if, you know, if you hire, you know, somebody to look at your system, go ahead and get that diagram because everybody needs yeah. a diagram. This tends to be more high level. How does the system overall work? How do the components and interact with each that's other? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, a lot of some other kinds of things that are in the technical documentation might be, you know, like information about the databases and, and things like that. You know, you can, you can really drill down as much as you want. You could have a documentation that's like two or three pages, or you could have documentation that's a hundred pages. Um, Are you a proponent of writing this before you start coding or document what happens during? After? During, okay. During. So it should be in parallel. Yes, it should be in parallel. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then um, another type of documentation is the documentation that you write to write the requirements. So okay. sometimes it's a business analyst or an architect, somebody who's going to, you know, product owner or somebody who's going to write the the actual business requirements the functional requirements um a lot of people use agile style i love agile i'm an agile person but um either way writing out the requirements figuring out what do you want it to do asking the client what do you want it to do and then breaking it down and and writing those requirements out and having a list of a backlog of all of your requirements. Now that can be entered into systems such as Jira, Azure DevOps, um, other systems of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, or you can, um, usually you can export it and put it into a document. And it's really nice to be able to hand it over to a client and, um, or hand it over to your department head or whatever, you know, the leaders. And, you know, that way they can see what the requirements are and it's sure. all written out. And then it's like, okay, well this, before we go, before we, you know, work on this, this work item, um, this is what the requirements, this is what we heard you say. Yeah. Remove that ambiguity. Uh, yeah. Comes and, and back in waterfall course. days, everybody had this like business requirements document, like BRD. I remember this BRD thing. 
Um, was, I haven't. Yeah, it was this thick. Yeah, it was so big. Um, but these days, I have seen more of a trend towards, you know, Jira stories, printouts of Jira, um, you know, spreadsheets, uh, things like that. Awesome. Are there any other types that we should cover? Or... Yeah. So I would say the other th one thing that sometimes is missed at the end of a project is the user documentation. So you do need to make some documentation that's going to be con consumable to the users. Sure. Um, so like kind of like a step by step of like how to use the front end or how to do this, how to click on that and that, and, you know, so um, user documentation is also important as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, share with us some best practices that you developed over the years okay. of creating this documentation. Okay. Um, so the first best practices I would I would uh, talk about would be clarity and conciseness. So like you don't have to write a whole novel. It's just make it clear, make your point clear. Um, and also you don't, you shouldn't be putting in like jargon and things like that because you don't know if that jar those initial, those acronyms are going to be existent again. Um, it's so funny. So many times people will say like, what is this acronym? And we have, I have to Google it or you know, something, look it up in an email or something. Um, but yeah, so j take it, try to make it jargon free um, or have a glossary in it that says that what the jargon means. Um, that's also good. Like we like, I like to put like a page in there that has the, like the acronyms and, and um, the descriptions. Um, mm -hmm. But just be very clear and concise. Um, another thing is just keeping it updated. So let's say that you're working on a system and you, um, you know, you basically released it and it went to production and everyone's using it and everything. And then let's say you do some enhancements to it. Well, guess what? You're doing enhancements. You need to take that documentation back out again and you need to update the documentation as you go. So it becomes a living, breathing document. So you might have version two, you know, you, you have the system version one, then you have version two, and then you have the document um, that is updated. Uh, and then people can always look at the most recent document. Um, next is, um, yeah, just like tools. Um, you know, there's just, as far as tools, um, I know that, um, you know, I mentioned like Jira and Azure DevOps and things like mm -hmm. that. Sure, um, those are maybe. those are yeah github and all that those are great tools but like i mean you can you can document obviously i'm not going to say the obvious things like you know of course you can put it on word and excel um that's fine powerpoint um but there are just so many different tools out there confluence they can like collaborate on your documentation but just um sharepoint um but I think that like when you're working with developers, having some way that they can kind of collaborate is good. Um, I know I went to a conference recently and there were a lot of, I mean, at least one or two um, companies that I talked to that actually were trying to build tools like that where you can collaborate, but there's already existing tools out there where you can collaborate. Cause so, so if more than one developer is working on um, a user story or, or an Epic or something, um, they can, add their doc, you know, they can add their comments into that document and then they can both, you know, collaborate sort of thing. Um, yeah. So. Oh, well, how does this fit into the whole, you mentioned uh, Azure DevOps and uh, Jira. Uh, uh, these are tools that are for application lifecycle management to manage that software development lifecycle. Where, where does documentation fit into that? Well, so you can, you can add um, comments like basically, well, okay, so how does it fit in? Well, okay, so I'm just going to give an example. Um, in Jira, you can export your user stories and you can get them and put them on a, basically put them on a Word document and then give them to the client. And then you can like, or you can export all of your user stories, a, a whole chunk of them. And then you can, you know, you basically can just, it's, it's just, it's easy that way. You don't have to like rewrite everything. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that's that's one way you can do. It. You okay. can do the same thing. Azure DevOps. You can do the same thing. Um, and then also just like they do have like fields where you can like add things or you could upload, you know, documents or you know, extra information about um, what you did. 
So it, just, it really kind of depends on like your organization, how they're structured. I mean, um, we have, uh, sometimes I've used um, SharePoint and SharePoint is really great for, you know, just keeping folders and documents in there. Um, you know, I mean, I don't probably obvious, but Google Drive too, although, you know, SharePoint's probably a little more secure. Uh, but yeah, that's, those are kind of the tools that I'm familiar with. And I know there are more, and I know there are actual um, tools out there that are specific to this kind of coding documentation. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I can't really speak to those, but I know they're out there. So you probably can Google those as well. But another thing I wanted to say is yeah. release notes. So okay. um, when you release your code, and you do a demo to a client or to the person, you know, to the department that you're working with. Um, a lot of times they may ask for release notes. Well, they shouldn't have to ask for it. You should give it to them anyway. That's that's when you just tell them what your document, you know, you basically tell them what, what it did, like- um, What changed. Yeah, what changed, exactly. So you give out the release notes and that in JIRA, there's a section for to write your release notes in there. Now with the and i'm gonna we're gonna talk about ai in a little bit but you know with ai you can literally have the ai write the release notes um obviously you can edit them and make sure that they're correct but um you can that doesn't sh shouldn't be that hard of a thing so yeah let's talk about ai what, what role does this have today and in the future well um okay i think there's just a lot of different ways that you can um, use AI, and I'm just going to highlight a, a few things um, that I am comfortable talking about. So uh, one is that release notes thing where you can basically get the code to enter the code and get the um, release notes from just, you basically can ask it to um, give you release notes, it'll give you release notes. And I know there's probably tools out there that do that, and they have a co-pilot that can, that can help you with that as well. Um, I've also been using, um, I've been using a tool called Noda and that hmm. basically you can upload information, you can upload transcripts of meetings and, um, you can like, sometimes we might have, um, tech, uh, tech huddles or tech meetings and you can upload, um, you know, just transcripts of meetings and they'll, it'll tell you like. Oh, here's some action items to do, or, <laughs> or here's a summary. Cause like, you know, when people talk to each other, they're kind of, there's a lot of like gobbledygook and stuff, um, that they say, and sometimes it's not such a structured conversation. Um, but you know, that the virtual assistant or AI can, can help organize that into something that's consumable. Excellent. Yeah. I, I've worked with, um, GitHub Copilot. And it has a feature I can just right click on uh, some code and say, document this, create the documentation for this, which is a really nice feature. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to write it all yourself. The, the, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it takes a, away from the writer's block. You know, you don't, don't feel bad. Like, oh, well, you know, I had to use an AI to do this, you know, no, it's, this is a tool. It's not going away and you know, it's a tool, so. Very cool. Uh, tell me about just some of the challenges you've come across when either writing documentation yourself or convincing your customers to invest in this. Um, so challenges, um, I guess outdated documentation is probably the most common thing where you go oh, and it's yeah. like, oh, can I see, can I see an architecture diagram? And then it's like, oh, here it is, you know? People don't even they're look at it. They're describing. They send they're describing it. the system as it existed two years ago. Five years and ago, so it, and it they, doesn't match yeah, with current system. But they send it. They're like, "Oh, good, I found it in this fo folder." They send it, <laughs> and then you're like, "Oh, <laughs> uh, what's going on with this?" Oh, they're like, "Oh, we don't do that anymore." Oh, this is different now. Oh, we have this now. It's like, well, okay, but you just gave it to me, so that's what I. You're giving this to me, so look at it first and um you know try to let's try to update it together you know so that's that's yeah outdated documentation i think is good uh, is a 
a challenge or pitfall. Um, I think there's just sort of like an overall resistance to documentation. I think it just feels daunting to a lot of people for some reason. And, you know, with the advent of AI, uh, it really shouldn't be like, you know, your writer's block will go away. You'd still have to review everything that you write or that you have right. assisted to be written, but it, you really shouldn't be too scared about it. Another thing is sometimes when people estimate projects, um, they don't estimate for the time that it takes to document it. So mm -hmm. they don't do it because it's, they run out of budget or whatever, right. you know, they don't have time. Oh, I, I lost, I ran out of time. So, you know, ran out of budget and time. So just put that in the, in the, uh, you know, put that in the estimate and in the statement of work and tell the client or tell the department uh, leader that you're going to deliver them so the following documents, you know, describe what they are. Um, you know, don't just say I'm giving you some documents, just tell them, you know, specifically, I'm going to give you a backlog list. I'm going to give you, uh, the backlog list will have the, re the requirements, you know, the high level listing of the requirements. I'm going to give you an architecture diagram and I am going to give you a user guide, you know, that's yeah. good. And I'll, uh, and define I'll give you the, I'll define give the, the value that notes. you're going to deliver. Yeah, exactly. Def release notes too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is there anything we haven't covered that you feel is critical with this topic? Mm, I think we've been covering a lot. I'm getting all excited yeah, about it. Yes, that. Uh, me too. I want to write something now. <laughs> Where, if, let's say I wanted to do, let's say I'm a novice at this. I've been slacking off because I didn't realize how important documentation was until I saw this video. And now I want to get better at it. Where, where, where would I go to learn more and get? I mean, I'm just going to say you probably. I mean, you could just easily Google it or use ChatGPT and ask it, like, how do I get better about documentation? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think you need, like, you know, or you could go to, um, you know, like at a lot of the conferences that they have, um, you know, any of those dev conferences or meetups, sometimes they have a documentation as a, as, you know, like one of the topics. Um, I mm -hmm. actually just, they just the reason why I kind of developed this topic is because I just kind of found that like, I've seen it done the, the right way and I've seen it done the wrong way. And there's always room for improvement and it definitely has caused pain. It's been a pain point and like so many different clients. Um, and I see the one, the clients that have it and the clients that don't have it and it's a big difference. And, sure. you know, I just feel like everyone should do it and um, get better at it. We get all get better at it. And so then I developed a, a workshop and I submitted it because we were, you and I were talking about, you know, public speaking opportunities. So I did find a conference and uh, they, they accepted it. So um, that's in September. Uh, one, coming, one coming up? Yeah, it's in September. So I'm uh, just, you know, kind of using... Uh, this opportunity to, you know, talk about it, but, you know, ahead of that. So excellent. Yeah. Where, where is the conference? Maybe our viewers it's in Dallas. What can you share the name? Uh, it's jconf.dev. dot dev. Oh, oh, I'm familiar with jconf. You've gone there. I've never been there, but I know some of the you organizers. You know of it. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you know everybody. <laughs> Not entirely true. Uh, but I know you, and it's been a pleasure talking with you, Valerie. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in, technology enthusiasts and friends alike. Until next time, stay curious, stay connected, and keep embracing technology and documentation. <laughs>